set of duels for the other truck, but I kind of want to try them on this. And they stuck out a little bit, but look mean. But they just rode rough, so deleted on those and just went back to the simple guys. Toxic waste. You can take them with you. That'll make it look balanced when we're going down the road. sell grandpa's house so you can buy this trailer. Man. <laughs> they did steal the switch. Well, if you guys guessed that I bought the Great Northern Flatbed, I mean, you saw me load it up, you'd be correct. So this is going to be for the new 5500. I'm going to, you know, I saved quite a bit of money by not going with the skirted option, but I'll get into that here in a second. I just, I wanted to do a little bit more custom bracketry than... You know, I could ordered one and waited months and months, got it custom built to everything I wanted. But then at the end of the day, I kind of want to see what I'm going to like out of it rather than try to order some generic thing. But I'm hoping that this bed is going to bolt on to the new truck a little bit better than this one did. I'll get in, show you guys what I'm talking about here. So this is for a 60 cap axle cab chassis truck. So it's got the one frame rail for the flatbed. Now I'm hoping across the board that the frame rail widths on the pickups are going to be um, the same because the cab chassis are designed for upfits just like this. So I'm hoping that's just going to be straight on, weld some C-channel to the sides of this, bolt it to the frame of the truck and be on our way. When it came to grandma's truck, it came down to the wire. It was a little tricky because they got two frame rails in here, which I honestly think that's quite a bit stronger. Obviously you got double the meat down here. So you got the inner one and the outer one, and neither one of those really lined up with the second gen Dodge frame width. So what I ended up doing is I got a metal spacer back in here. I probably should have hit that with some rattle can at least. And then a bolt through it, and I got a custom threaded piece that goes onto the inside of this and sandwiches the backside down. Up in the front, I went ahead and got a couple, uh, I forget what they call that stuff. It's kind of like Lexan, not Lexan. I don't know. It's some heavy duty rub rail kind of stuff up there that can, it's not going to rub back and forth like steel or wear it out or nothing well, on the factory spot. But then here I took a piece of three quarter, welded it straight to the bottom of the frame and then bolted to the pickup frame. She's all good to go. Still need to deal something with that. I hadn't figured that out since I was putting this in here, but I'm going to just extend it and put the fill cap right there. But when it comes down to this guy, it just got the one and i got the bmw turnover ball so down the line if i get a bigger trailer i can put the three inch ball in there and get the heavy duty rating now they do rate the hitch itself at thirty thousand pounds so if i put a 40k ball in there well then is the hitch really good for that but since i got this thing not mounted on the truck and i got time to kill i'm gonna go ahead and do some additional bracketry down in here just to really guarantee that thing's gonna be as tough as it could be but I mean, they actually, they got that old girl in here pretty dang good. There's pretty heavy duty. I might, you know, cause they weld the outsides or something like that right here. I might go ahead and weld the insides as well. Just how, you know, I got it like all open up like this. I probably won't ever have that chance again. I'll go ahead and really super up. Cause I mean, she's gonna see some abuse and these trailers are actually built to pretty good quality or these flatbeds. 
<sighs> Built up in Oregon, just up north from me. The bumper pull hitch jack here, it's a two inch receiver, but I got two inch receiver um, balls that are good for 22,000 pounds, just the hitch part itself. So I'm not too worried about, you know, the hitch, but the receiver part, they claim these are rated for 18,000. That's what they call them good for. And that's just shy of what I'm looking to pull with this. I think it'll do just fine, but I might go in there and just add a little bit to it. It's all pretty thick stuff and it's all tied into one rather than just, you know, two down bars and hitch across it like some manufacturers do. So I'm, I'm really trying to tie all this together. I like how they got it set up, ease access to this stuff. Some manufacturers have the pin on the bottom, hard to get to, a lot of pickups rather. And good D-rings, easy hook onto. Recessed lights, and they don't have some goofy stuff like that North Star one where it's got a big spot that you can collect dirt. And since it's a turnover ball, it doesn't have the hidden cubby like the uh, other trucks do. So they went ahead and put the plug-in up here real clean. I'll probably end up taking those little louver things out because I'm not going to need those. Main reason I honestly wanted to go with this headache rack is for one, just how it looks. It's sturdy. It's got a wide bottom on it so that it can have, you know, it's, it's sturdy. I can't say it 50 times without really meaning it. Ain't going nowhere. That's what I'm trying to say. And... The back window visibility is great out of these because this morning before I went down there and bought this one, I crawled around in grandma's truck because I already have literally the same bed and just investigated it and seen things I really liked about it. And if I take these out, even with them in, you still got tons of room. Your whole back window is open. And the North Star bed that I have, the backup lights and the tail lights for the rack are right here. They eat up literally what is that like 15% of each side? So you're down 30% of your visibility in your key spots. I mean, I've obviously had no issues with it, but I was thinking, man, you're losing a lot of real estate in your visibility towards the back just with those lights. And they take them and put them in here. These suckers are pl plenty bright. Let's go ahead and fire up grandma's here. Does have a switch until you upfit it for the backup guys i haven't got around to that i've done a lot of stuff to this truck and still have a lot to do but for the most part it's got some good good lights here all these things are all set up for turn signal option as well as the brake lights um you know up in the top up in the bottom they got the extra lights running for, or extra wires running for all that stuff and this thing was just straight up plug and play the whole bed rock and roll ready to wire um you just got to get the plug in snap it into the truck and you're good to go what I'm going to plan on for up on the top here, since I'm not wasting from here back with a transfer tank, if I get my way and build custom um, fuel tanks down here for the equipment, I might have to put, uh, come up with some radical idea for the fuel pump. Haven't come that far in the thought bar process yet, but I'd like to have just a simple little low profile toolbox, something you fit two chainsaws, leaf blower, handheld unit in there and a couple other tools because all these spots down in here for skirted flatbeds, like this box here is actually not terrible as far as how much you can fit in it. But if you got one of those like triple rack toolboxes for your standard, um, I don't actually think it would fit in here because it, it channels it down so much. But I'll come up with something like this to go on the back of the bed because I can build something like this bad boy. Not too bad a deal, but I like representing and supporting something I, I like like this brand. So that's what I want with that. If I saved the price I paid for this versus the four month wait lead time to get the custom built one with the skirted just toolboxes was $4,000 difference. And uh, I don't know if my dealer made me any kind of special break for being a buddy or nothing like that, but uh, you know, $4,000 cheaper to not get the skirt. That gives me a lot of scratch I can play with to go ahead and do some custom bracketry and i actually seen one of these trucks not with this brand bed but one similar and i was like man that looks pretty good it's got skirted toolboxes and stuff on it and they were actually bolt-on toolboxes on the side of it and done right you couldn't even tell so that's i'll be pretty happy to do something like that and i'll have shoot two feet more of toolbox room worth right there so i might even come up with the toolbox it can fit one of those triple craftsman sets in it that i've given away a couple of times back in there because i got nowhere to really put those on anything and i'd like to honestly carry one of those on a regular basis but it's pretty good i went to home depot and bought a ladder 
I carry this toolbox up on the top, but something like this. Slide up in there, probably something a little bit shorter to go up in there. That's what I'm kind of thinking. Figured I get the bed before it gets too late and they get expensive or even harder to get. I just, I really like how much tie down spots they got. I, I rode dirt bikes for a long time. I wish I had still ride mine. I got a freaking fresh one. This just been sitting. Bought a brand new one. First time in my life buying a brand new bike myself. Bought it in 2017 and I got 30 hours on it. I rode it a pretty good amount first, I don't know, year, I guess. But I always look for spots in any pickup to see what kind of a guy we're dealing with. If they got tie down spots for a dirt bike, which I say these are dirt bike tie downs, then I'm like, that's a pretty good little setup. Got a good headache rack for the dirt bike to go on to, even though this truck ain't gonna be doing none of that. It'll have a good spot up here. Put my spare tire. I ain't gonna cut nothing down there, put a spare tire down there. I'm trying to free up bed space, not dig holes in it. But oh yeah, I wanted to check this out. Oh, I thought I pulled the lever on it. Those things are good. Recess down in there. Pretty I'm pretty hang happy with this. Nice bed. For a couple of things on the North Star bed that I have on my current 5500. This bed was brand new to this truck when I bought it in 2016. So it's a five, six year old bed, something like that. I don't, you know, 16, 15, something. Who does math? Anyway, go over a couple things that I didn't like about the North Star bed. They I mean they're minimal things, but when it comes down to picking other brands, there's brands like CM that share like really, really close characteristics. And I'm gonna point those out. And first thing is these are the same tail lights that are in pretty much everything. You know, the simple recessed tail lights. These are the same ones that the Great Northern has, but they, you know, they tried to make it fancy and it, I think at this point they made it too fancy because it made a nice shelf right here for junk just to catch in. So you got to take a pressure washer or leaf blower to that on a regular basis, going down dirt roads, stuff like that. It just gets full of stuff. And the paint on this thing is just, it's crap. I mean, it's falling. It just fell off right there by doing that. See, look here. This is right there. It's flaking off. Terrible, terrible paint job. So North Star, they needed to work on that. One thing I do like about the North Star versus the CM See him has a little bit different receiver hitch kind of style back here. I like how, you know, most bed manufacturers will tie everything in and all their skirting will go all the way down into the back bumper so that you have all that sheer strength versus what uh, CM does is they just got a bar across it with two down pieces and, you know, I'm sure it's just as strong, but I like seeing everything kind of tied together. So that's one thing I didn't really care for with the CM and it's pretty much the same thing and really comes down to i think that the great northern and bradford have the by far the most superior headache racks this one is i mean it's a pretty stout big box tubing on there the foundation where it supports in is completely weak trash um this thing continually breaks so i think my last little gusset added to it is going to provide the extra strength that it needs to last the longest that it probably ever has but same thing with the CM. They both have the same headache rack. And I was like, no, I don't want to deal with that junk. Um, I like the Bradford one. I, honestly, I think Bradford makes quality product. I haven't personally ran or seen their beds like on a daily basis. But I talked to Bradford a couple years back and they kind of steered me the wrong direction, rubbed me the wrong way, if you will. So I prefer not to deal business with them, especially if there's a product that is just as good, if not better, like the Great Northern. They have the same flatbed pretty much to a T. I don't know how each of them have the same bed and they're different brands. I don't know if they're sister, brother, company, cousins, whatever, but I like that headache rack that it has. And I might've mentioned this earlier, but look at how much view gets just like eaten up. I mean, I made it work. It's not a big deal. But then if you look out the back window with the great Northern grandma's truck, I was like, man, it's completely wide open. And more than likely I'll take those little ribs out of there. Maybe not, maybe I'll keep them. But I will definitely keep the headache rack with the spare tire option on the top because that is just, it's handy keeping it out of the way. Whole thing is to open up the bed space. A lot of you guys had great, you know, response to putting the fuel tanks in place of the skirted toolbox down there because it's going to open up the bed. I'm not going to run on um, just a, what do you got, like a hot shut toolbox and dually covers. I'm not going to do that. I actually want to use the flat bed put attachments, implements, and stuff like that up on there on a regular basis, and it's just not always running the gooseneck. Um, it'll probably be doing it 80% of the time, but that other 20% of the time, I don't want to render the truck completely useless. Did look into the option. Haas still might go with it, 
We haven't completely made up the mind on his because the switch and go, it seems to be a pretty good option. I thought about that for mine. They do make a gooseneck option that will feature into the switch and go thing. But it, the ones of the video I've seen with it, it puts the gooseneck ball behind the rear drives or behind the drives or rear axle, whatever you want to call it. And that just, I mean, if it works, it works, but I don't want to be towing the weight I'm planning on towing. Shall I upgrade to a bigger Diamond C later on? That dump trailer's hooked up to it now. So I don't want to have a gooseneck ball that's behind the axle. It just doesn't make any sense. But we definitely did look into that route for my truck. But since I already bought that bed, it just, well, we're committed. And I'm okay with that. Very, very okay with it. So let me know what you guys all think. We finally just went ahead and pulled the trigger on it. Um, again, I think the, the new truck is supposed to be here in seven weeks or something like that. I am in no hurry. And as far as what the plan for this truck is, it'll more than likely just go under a low mile exemption and I'll keep running it. They don't even check the mileage anyway here. But, um, you know, this truck has definitely been a big part of the like the YouTube channel and that fact alone, I don't plan on getting rid of it. So uh, I'll keep it around. Maybe one of these days I'll just have a museum with trucks. But we're going to end it here. Comment what you guys think about this setup right here. I'm going to pick up the 12 in the morning and then haul about um, well, a trailer load of oak logs back to Haas's house um, with the dump trailer. So it's going to be multi-purpose tomorrow. I left the big buddy there on the job. If I need to haul off any of the other equipment, I'll have everything I need to do so. But anyway, let me know what you guys think about this setup. It's a gangster setup. I'll say that much. We'll see you guys in the next one. Right, Boone? Later.